Good afternoon. I am Ariana Cohen Halberstam. I'm the artistic director of Boston Jewish Film. Welcome to our 32nd annual festival and to this conversation about Isaac. I am so pleased to have with us here today the director of the film. And I first want to thank our community partner, the Consulate General of the Republic of Lithuania. Now, please welcome Jurgis Matulavicius. Did I Hello. get that right? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> thank okay. you so much for being here with us um, and for sharing your film, uh, which which I really do think is a masterpiece. It's um, and you know I watched it again for a second time and um, it's it's just so cinematic and it deals with so many important themes. Um, and I know this film was based on a story by Antana Shema, um, and I wanted to know. Um, when you read that story and when you sort of got the inspiration from your film and and maybe you can talk also about how closely um, the film stays to the story. Yeah, so uh, I think that uh, I I read Antana Schema in school because it was in the list of the literature we, of the Lithuanian literature, ev everyone should read in the high school and uh, so he's uh, one of the few good Lithuanian writers I know. Uh, he is, it, well, he reminds me of uh, the Beat Generation uh, writers, especially like William Burroughs and I know, Allen Ginsberg, uh, because mm, I know he's a surrealist, a nihilist, and uh, uh, in, in the time he, he wrote uh, his literature, his novels uh, were very modern. And uh, um, so uh, actually he exiled from Lithuania in 1941 and he spent all his life in the United States. Uh, he lived in New York. And uh, yeah, but he, well, I think uh, he would be a, a very good uh, world writer, but he couldn't write in English. Mm -hmm. He could speak it, but he, he couldn't write it. And I don't know. Uh, and only now he's translated, only la last year, uh, uh, his uh, novels and short stories are translated in, in, into English. Uh, yeah, so um, about the film, uh, so uh, this story uh, was written uh, in a form of a diary from a psychiatric hospital in the 60s, and it starts uh, like uh, my film in 1944-41 with the sequence of a massacre, and uh, in uh, Schema's uh, story, uh, he's talking about uh, uh, a character who is living in the United States uh, and uh, he's persuaded by this uh, gu guilt. And um, I really wanted to, uh, to, uh, to make this guilt uh, come closer to my uh, main character and that's why I, I left him in Lithuania in the 60s and uh, uh, I put it uh, one more power of like the Soviets uh, so uh, the main character is uh, in the middle of of Nazis and, and Soviets with the with his guilt uh, going mad and so, <clears throat> so it sounds like there's a lot that you that you added to the to the original short story to flesh it out to make the film. Uh, well, yeah, and I don't know. I I think that uh, there is a a structure uh, uh, of uh, Schema's short stories. Uh, well, because he he writes uh, everything in. Um, in a puzzled way, you know, 
And uh, so uh, I thought that uh, from it, I can make a detective story uh, in, in, into my film. And uh, there are different characters from other stories yeah. of his, uh, like Elena or the Orca Zimeras, the KGB guy. Yeah, so. I, I, I'm interested, I mean, I want, I actually want to talk a lot about the structure of your film because I think it's very interesting, but I'm, I'm sort of want to get more to what drew you to this story because obviously you were not alive in 41 and you were not alive in the 60s either. Um, and sort of, I'm curious how the memory and the trauma of that era um, affects contemporary Lithuania or how it sort of sits with you um, as a younger person living in Lithuania today? Um, um, well, uh, you know, I, when I was, I don't know, young, I, I, I liked to read Camus and, uh, uh, I don't know, other writers uh, of uh, post-World War generation. And I think, uh, this drew me to to find this story, uh, to find this uh, uh, well uh, uh, well so, sorry uh, and uh, I really I really think that uh, 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 there is. Uh, I don't know, a time in one's life when you, uh, I don't know, need to start to, to speak about uh, things that matter, you know? And uh, uh, I don't know, I was, uh, I was uh, studying hi history uh, in the university. And then I went to a film school and uh, mm, I don't know, uh, I, I really liked history and I really wanted to make a, a historical drama so uh, I really needed a, a, a piece of uh, literature to make my first feature film so that's why I don't know I, I, I took uh, this story and uh, it's it's so I mean it's almost hard to believe that it came out of a short story just because it's so richly visual. Um, can, obviously, the first scene in the film is a full five minutes um, in black and white. It's a single shot. Is that right? It's yeah. a single take. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about how you created it and? Um, it frames the whole experience. We sit with it for the next two hours um, going through the film in the way that your that Andreas does. Um, can you talk about shooting it and then, um, yeah, and then we'll yeah. see the rest of the structure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this scene is shot in uh, one uninterrupted take, and uh, for me, uh, what was important that uh, people. Uh, uh, would try to relive it. So uh, I don't know. We uh, we had I think uh, twenty five takes, and uh, in every take uh, uh, there were like uh, I think eight minutes of reenactment of these things, and uh, uh, we staged it. Uh, uh, using the real photos uh, of that massacre, and uh, uh, and and of course we used uh, Antanas Kema uh, text and so. So uh, photos existed. Photos existed of the massacre. Yes, uh, there were, uh, I think, uh, twelve pictures of. Uh, Liatukis Garish massacre, uh, and it showed how uh, the uh, the Jewish people were accumulated, and so uh, 
and of course Gamma wrote about it so we try to really uh, as I said I really wanted the actors and uh, and uh, afterwards the viewer to relive it and uh, you know and to see how it I don't know really was so I don't know we put it everything we could to to show how how horrible it was and uh, yeah it's incredibly brutal and i think there's there's a, a thread of violence that goes throughout the film because one of the things that i thought was really interesting was in the scene where they're re, they're remaking this in a film which of course yeah. you did in making the film, but then of course there's a film within the film, um, and he shoots him. He shoots Isaac in the head. Um, whereas in in the initial um, in the in initial scene in the scene that you created of this, he beats him over the head with the gun. Um, with the and in some shuffle. ways, it's it's much more visceral to see that. And and then there's trying to go back and say, does he scream? Does he not scream? Um, creating a film within a film and trying to articulate violence or anger, uh, what was that process like? Um, well, uh, so uh, for the whole film, yeah, we see this uh, bursts of violence and we see the dead bodies uh, because uh, the theme is about, you know, about the guilt and about the violence and uh, how once uh, try to uh, to relive it to cope cope with uh, with uh, with their traumas and I don't know uh, the people uh, of I don't know of 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 that era they. All of them uh, had these traumas because uh, uh, our country, uh, I don't know, in, in the 40s, it uh, they were, uh, it was uh, taken by the Soviets in the 41, the Nazis came and then again, the Soviets came again. So uh, I don't know, uh, the land and the people were raped in so many ways and what, what was left uh, for them in the 60s uh, it's just to try to obey you know and uh, because uh, i don't know the horror absorbed everything else so uh. i mean th there's also that scene at the bar where the kgb um officer beats up this man because he thinks he said something against lenin there's it's like violence against violence against violence. And, and you said that this history wasn't really talked about until in our conversation earlier, until five years ago. Um, yes. uh, what's shifted? Uh, I don't know what, what's shifted, but uh, uh, five years ago, we had this book in our country, uh, which spoke about uh, about the the Holocaust and that uh, Lithuanians took part in it, and uh, that there were certain people who were supposed to be called uh, Lithuanian heroes uh, who part uh, who started the re resistant mo movement against uh, the Soviet Union, but. Uh, three or four years be before they were collaborating with Nazis, uh, helping them to with the ex extermination. So uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I think uh, there is uh, a, a time in, in, in country, uh, there, there is a time when we need to start speaking about things and not only speaking about uh, how he heroic our country was because all we have in Lithuania uh, the 
historical films are about, uh, I don't know, the heroes of our country, the, pa the partisans who fought against the Soviets. And um, I think that uh, the, uh, the history uh, is indecent, uh, full with indecent people and is dark. And I don't know, I, I, uh, it, for me, it's really interesting to dig into this, this part of, of our history. And uh, uh, I'm not trying to blame anyone or, on, on a anything, but just to show uh, to everybody that uh, there is a other side, you know, yeah, I mean, well, and then, of course, we see someone who in the second scene of the film is considered a hero, the filmmaker who comes back and then is demonized quickly. The KGB begins to believe that he was involved. So sort of the way we look at our heroes and, and you know, m maybe mis misinterpret who, who's done what and, and what that means in terms of the legacies in, in our countries. Um, I, I really am curious about the form because you chose to make the film in three parts, um, which I think is a really interesting choice. And you also shift between black and white and color. And the first burst of color we see is almost cleansing because it's after this massacre, which is black and white and busy, we're, we're sort of sunk into this blue. This, you know, It's almost as though we're being washed, that's being washed away from us. Um, can you talk about the structure of the film and also your choices in when to use black and white, when to use color? Yeah, so uh, 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 the, the first idea was to shoot the film in black and white because yeah, it's, uh, I thought that it, it's a historical film and you know, black and white represents it. But later on, as we were, constructing the film structure and the characters around it. Uh, I saw that uh, there is a part in the film when, when the past uh, in uh, Andrew's head takes, the, take, takes it all uh, and this, uh, and, and this, uh, haunting image of his guilt uh, takes a, takes the whole place in his head. So uh, I thought that uh, it should be shot in black and white. So we see the first part when we talk about yeah when we have this first scene of massacre and uh, the his friend is coming and and the and uh, he, he hurts uh, that he's doing a film on this massacre. So the past uh, is coming back. And uh, the, 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 the color part, uh, it's, it's about new starts. Uh, in uh, uh, his friend's life, he's starting a film and uh, maybe in his wife's uh, uh, life because she's uh, she's helping uh, uh, the director and uh, she's trying to get out of of the marriage she's trapped in. Uh, so yeah, and the third part uh, where uh, little by little everything comes back to from where it started from where it began. So uh, yeah, that that's. I, there was an interesting mirroring in the first two black and white scenes, just of the the sort of when he gets off the boat and the busyness and the mayhem again of all these people getting off the boats, but with such a different tune. Um, I just I I found that really interesting as as those two scenes were were juxtaposed with the massacre and then his arrival again. Um, 
what can you talk a little bit about the structuring into the three parts? Um, you you set those apart very separately, even though of course everything is sort of converging in the film at the same time: memory and present and guilt and moving on. Um, um, well, uh, uh, you were talking about uh, about the. Uh, two scenes where we, we have uh, uh, lots of people in the frame and they're very different. And uh, uh, maybe I, I wanted to talk about the, uh, how diff well, how different it was because uh, uh, in the Uh, wait, I mean, what? the 40s and the 60s were in some ways very different eras, but I think it's the fact that these scenes were similarly framed in a way, I think, draws that connection. Well, uh, uh, the, every scene uh, was shot in, uh, in a one single shot, you know, and afterwards, uh, uh, I cut it in in jump cuts, you know, just to to make a rhythm, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the structure, the three parts of the film. So, uh, mm, do you want? To know why uh, yeah why why did you do it i mean it came from a short story and you have these three parts even though yeah they, well they, uh, this short story you know was like 60 pages long so yeah it, it wasn't so short but uh but yeah but uh, <laughs> uh then uh, again from this story uh, what was left from this story you know it, it was only i think uh the First, the the massacre scene, and then the main character's name, you know, and um, that's it. And then uh, we sat with uh, my screenwriters, and uh, and we wrote uh, this de this detective story, which takes place in uh, in a c completely different world. So, uh, do, you I don't know. do you think? It, yeah. Uh, sorry. yeah. So I don't know these three parts. It came to me. I, I don't know by by accident. Maybe by I don't know. I, I just felt that uh, I need to divide this film in, in, in into three parts. Uh, uh, because uh, I don't know uh, uh, the writer schema. He writes about. Uh, uh, about the nine circles of hell. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from Dante. So, right. yeah, so I really wanted to use this, uh, 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 this symbol. So uh, maybe from, from, from there, I just, uh, I, I, I put it into three parts. Uh, I, I was wondering, you, you also said you see the main character's name, um, and it's interesting that we think of Isaac as the main character. Why did you choose to name the film after him? Uh, well, uh, the story was named uh, after him, uh, and uh, although he's not uh, participating uh, in a film uh, as a as a character, but uh, well, I think that he's a very important ca character because uh, everyone uh, speaks about him, everyone everyone thinks about him, and he's the uh, the he's like a, yeah he's like the main character from uh, whom everything starts and finishes. So. Yeah, and uh, and you see all all these pictures of him, you know, do, during the film, uh, when yeah, when Andres is uh, in his lab. 
Well, there's speaking about it being in his lab. There's a there's some questions coming in from the audience, um, and this one from Marilyn Rosenberg is: Can you explain the choice of making Andreas a crime scene photographer? Mm. Well, uh, um, I wanted him to be uh, a closer to the Soviet regime to work. Uh, uh, near the K near the KGB, uh, and uh, I wanted to make him a crime scene photographer's photographer because of the bodies he photographs. Uh, in the in the first scene, we see uh, lots of kill, lots of uh, like killings, lots of bo bo bodies, and uh, so and they goes through all during all the film with him just just near him to remind him of of the things he've done of the guilt and uh, i don't know to to make a, a and making him more pa paranoid all the time so this uh, this murder he did never leaves him you know that's it's like a symbol. The bodies is like a symbol of not letting him to forget. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like he doesn't let himself forget whether or not he he just you know unconsciously. Um, there's a question here about the way the guilt manifests in the film. They say it's extremely interesting. Can you speak to the way that guilt and trauma play in the film and the decision behind those representations? Um, and I think. This is obviously one way. Are there other ways that you sort of made the guilt a part of the film um, and the way you represented that in the filmmaking? Uh, I really wanted to show uh, Andrus, you know, uh, after what he he he's made. Uh, I really wanted to show his loneliness and how it leads to paranoia and madness and uh, how uh, you're holding this secret you know for a very very long time and uh, that there is no way to f to forget the murder and uh, and when you passively hold everything uh, the trauma builds up. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm curious because of that, of sort of, and this is a question also from the audience about the reaction to the film in Lithuania, if we think of it in terms of collective trauma, collective guilt. Um, seeing your film, what has the reaction been and where has it played? Yeah, so uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we uh, couldn't make a national premiere and uh, we only did a small pr premiere two days ago for a small group of people. Uh, so uh, I couldn't say uh, anything right, right now. We are hoping to, to do a premiere in, uh, in, in the spring and I think it's, it's going to be controversial and uh, I think uh, I think that uh, I, I don't know a bit, I think that it will uh, it will it will well it uh, I'm sorry uh, uh, I, I I was lost uh, in, in my web, uh, I, I, it will uh, put many questions, you know, at stake, and uh, uh, it will be uh, it will be very interesting to hear uh, from my people what do they think about uh, uh, me uh, uh, about uh, me portraying the 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 history, you know, so. Has yeah. there been a critical response yet uh, within Lithuania? Have you sent it to press? Uh, 
no well because there was a, because nobody saw the film so you know uh, that's why uh, i don't know we're still waiting for the pre pre premiere and uh, yeah well hopefully it'll be soon i mean it's interesting you said you started to think about the film five years ago which is the same around the same time that the book came out so i'm wondering how the conversation around this topic has has been shifting and whether by the spring um, there might be there might be a, a hunger for this kind of movie hopefully uh, yeah well uh, I think that uh, when this book was out uh, there was uh, lots of questions uh, and conversations uh, but uh, you know uh, everything stops in 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 some time and uh, and yeah and uh, I don't know. We, we we wanted to make this premiere two years ago, and uh, everybody were talking about the controversy of this film, and now everything uh, went to a shadow. And yeah, we're just wait, waiting for it. We really we really want to start this conversation with uh, the the people. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm hoping more and more people watch it through the festival. It's available through November 15th. I have one more question that, that I was curious about watching the film is the whole idea of using a script um, as evidence, um, sort of the question of you know, using art as, as fact in the way that we're now looking at this film to sort of explore the history. Did the KGB use art and uh, film in this way as a piece of evidence and in investigation? Well, uh, they used every piece of evidence they could obtain uh, to make one's life miserable. So either you were, either you were working for the KGB uh, in many, you could help them in many di different ways. Either you were sent to the uh, to the gulag, to the labor camp, you know, and somewhere in Siberia, and probably you would never come back. And yeah, so uh, Lithuanians, you know, uh, uh, there were so many people sent to the wor working camps because of not collaborating with Soviets and. Uh, yeah, it, uh, our country had a very uh, harsh time being occupied yeah. for a very long time. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, from the 90s, we are free. And uh, I don't know. It, well, this is... It's good to have <laughs> our country back. And to be able to make films like this one, um, it's really, uh, you know, congratulations on it. It's, it's a really provocative and beautiful film and I'm I'm very glad to be showing it in this festival and to have gotten to see it twice at this point um, and good luck with the premiere uh, when it whenever it comes I know you're in lockdown for another few weeks in Lithuania right now um, yes. but yeah, hopefully but, uh, and still uh, you know uh, even after lockdown people doesn't go to cinema now because I don't know. They're afraid of the virus, so it's uh, it's it's. I don't know. It's really sad that uh, you know culture is. Uh, I don't know. It it's it's left. Uh, as it's put it aside, you know. Uh, but uh, I hope that yeah, in a couple of months. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm glad oh. we're able to share it with people to watch on their home screens, and I hope one day it will be on the big screen where, where this yeah. film really deserves to yeah. be. So Yes, because it yeah. was made for the big screen, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And are, are you working on anything else now, or you're waiting for this one to uh, to have its premiere before your next project? Uh, well, the, I finished a short documentary, and uh, I started to work uh, on a new script uh, with my screenwriter, um, who also wrote uh, the, was one of the free script writers of Isaac. 
So yeah, now we are working the, on the second feature. Yeah. So. Again, for a big screen, not our not our home TVs. I hope. Yes. A whole, yeah. Which is a whole full message in and of itself. Well, thank you so much. I know it's ten thirty at night there, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, and what it, just quickly, what is the short film about? Is it a, on a similar theme? Uh, no. Uh, for now, I I'm leaving history. Uh, I don't know aside for some years because I really uh, spent lots of research and, and, and try to, I don't know, uh, relive it, uh, relive the, <laughs> the 60s in my head for a very long time. So now, uh, 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 well, the documentary is about uh, four people, uh, uh, we're living uh, in a small government apartment and they're trying to, I don't know, drink themselves to a better life or to death. So, yeah. Sounds like an appropriate one for quarantine. <laughs> uh, we've linked here to your Vimeo page, it looks like, uh, so people can learn more. Is there anywhere else that people can connect to you and follow what you do next? Um, well, yeah, it's for now it's only a Vimeo page. Yeah. And we have a Isaac film page. Film Isaac. Yeah. So. so follow that there and tell your friends to watch the film until November 15th with us and all your friends in Lithuania. Tell them it's coming to theaters in a few months. <laughs> so okay. Thank you so much. It was thank wonderful you. to meet you and talk to you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.